Good evening, everybody. I'm Scott Binsack. It is January 5th. I'm live from Las Vegas. Tonight, we have nightly news, and I'm going to go into a special uh, report on Fukushima and the Pacific Ocean after that. In my opening statement, we have had a week of political chaos. Like I stated a week ago, we would have. I stated that we would have a lot of bombshells, and they have, and another one has just dropped a little while ago that two other officials pressured, went on the request of Donald Trump and pressured Jeff Sessions not to recuse himself. This is bombshell material, uh, that there was even one person from the Justice Department that went over to try to get dirt on Comey, etc. The point in this is also bombshells this week dropping about the Clinton Foundation that they are going to reinvestigate or reopen the investigation of the Clinton Foundation. The truth of that matter is the Clinton Foundation has been under investigation by the FBI for some years now. They are just now, this is a political move. This is a political move and it's political chaos. Point being, do the Clintons be belong behind bars? Yes. Does Uma Abedin, I'm sure, belong behind bars? Yes. However, in both cases here, as I've stated, both sides are dirty. We have a deep state war going on, and they have a lot more on Donald Trump than anyone knows. And I can assure you the little drips and drabs coming out, and they have a ton on Clinton. So when this is all said and done, as I said, both sides are going to go down, and we already have a political crisis, a constitutional crisis coming because of that as well as we are the laughing stock across the country, okay, as far as the drama that goes on in our White House and the stability, questioning the stability of our president. Americans need to wake up that the two-party system was designed to confuse, control, and distract. Americans should be worried about themselves and America and learn to take care of themselves and join together to help each other. If you're going to rely on this government to take care of you in a need of time or survival or emergency, think again. As previous storms this year, last year, excuse me, have shown, this is a nightmare. And this week has gotten much worse, as I said, and I'm going to tell you something breaking from me, that I expect indictments, new indictments within 10 days, the, maybe 15 the latest, but within 10 days, more indictments. Okay. People from inside the White House are going to be arrested. Kelly Conway in this is probably going to end up indicted in this as well. She's been lying for Donald Trump for some time. Bannon is going to be, I'm guaranteeing you're going to hear that he's going to make a deal with Mueller. Serious stuff is coming and Donald Trump is going to keep imploding. Hillary Clinton at all are not president of the United States. They deserve to go to jail. Let the Justice Department and FBI do what they're supposed to do. And we'll see what happens. And I say we'll see what happens because this big constitutional crisis with Trump and his White House will oversee, oversee that. Trust me, it is that bad. You're going to find out how much of a criminal Donald Trump has been his entire life. How much money laundering. How much corrupt organizations how much dealings with the Russians that he had and how much money he borrowed and how much they funneled to him and major real estate deals, etc. It is bad. This chaos, people need to see through this and focus and understand what's real news and what's not and get, stop getting caught up in whether Hillary Clinton goes to prison or not. It's not going to change the United States. It's not going to help you or your family if Hillary Clinton goes to jail, just so you know that. Or if Donald Trump goes to jail, it's not going to help your family. Either side, it doesn't matter. That's not going to help America. That's embarrassing to America. Okay, And it shows our weakness. And more and more people are showing weakness because they're getting caught up in the drama, the hate, the anger, the division. And that is not good for America or its people. In current and world events, we're looking at some maddening, maddening records being broken in the Northeast from this blizzard, 
okay, this, this, <laughs> this wacky storm, uh, as well as some other storms going on around the country. I'm going to get in at the end of this, the end part of the show, a special about Fukushima that just came out and how you can see how the politic, the, the Pacific Ocean has been and is being polluted horribly and no one's doing anything about it, nor will they do anything about it. requested a UN Security Council emergency meeting on the deadly unrest in Iran to be held on Friday. Washington's asked that the meeting be scheduled at 3 p.m. after a total of 21 people died and hundreds were arrested in five days of unrest that began on December 28 as protests over economic woes quickly turned against the regime in Tehran with attacks on government buildings and police stations. Iran says the United States has crossed every limit on international relations by expressing support for the anti-government protests in the Islamic Republic. This comes as French President Emmanuel Macron also criticized Israel, the United States, and Saudi Arabia for encouraging the Iranian anti-regime protests, saying the three countries could lead us to war. The Russian Deputy Foreign Minister has criticized a U.S. proposal for an extraordinary meeting of the U.N. Security Council on the protests in Iran. Sergei Ryabkov described as harmful and destructive the proposal by U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley. Earlier, Ryabkov warned the U.S. over its stance on the violent protests and riots in Iran, demanding that Washington avoid interfering in the Islamic Republic's internal affairs. The Russian diplomat said he is sure that Iran will overcome the current difficulties. In the ongoing protests in Iran, Turkey is now weighing in, warning against external parties attempting to interfere in the country's domestic politics. Addressing the unrest during a news conference in Ankara, President Tayyip Erdogan's spokesman said that such actions could provoke a backlash. Ibrahim Kalin told reporters that Turkey will not accept any interference through aimed at disrupting peace and tranquility. This after at least 20 were killed during the week of mass protests. Take a listen. Iran's peace and tranquility matters a lot to us. I have to say that if some people attempt to cause a stir in Iran from outside, it will only provoke backlash. Once again, I would like to stress that we cannot accept any interference through outside statements and tweets aimed at disturbing the society's peace and tranquility. Tweets. On Thursday, Turkey labeled the U.S. conviction of a Turkish banker for evading sanctions on Iran as an unprecedented meddling in its internal affairs, echoing allegations of President Tayyip Erdogan that the case is a political attack. The court's decision on Wednesday capped a trial that has increased tensions between the two NATO allies. Some of the testimony at the trial implicated senior officials, including Erdogan, However, Ankara has claimed that the case was based on fabricated evidence. Turkey's foreign ministry Another said the U.S. Right court there. in a process carried out by relying on so-called evidence, which is fake and open to political exploitation, made an unprecedented interference in Turkey's internal affairs. The U.S. says it's not going to send any more military aid to Pakistan until the country takes, Here quote, decisive action against terrorist groups like the Taliban. The State Department is freezing counterterrorism payments scheduled to go to Pakistan. That's in addition to the $255 million in military aid the U.S. already delayed paying. The move comes days after President Trump attacked the amount of aid Pakistan has received from the U.S. over the years. He also accused the country of providing safe haven to terrorist groups. U.S. officials have argued Pakistan's leniency on certain terror groups has fueled the... Pakistan lets terrorists live in their country, but the United States and Israel create the terrorist organizations. But that's okay, right? That's okay. It's okay that we create them, and then we say to the countries, no, you can't let them stay in your country or be there. You know, you're just as bad, yet we created them. We're the monsters. I'm telling you, we're the monsters. We are the monsters. That's the biggest mirage that people are missing. The U.S. is the monster, creating this havoc with New World Order. Bottom line. 
the ongoing war in Afghanistan. But the country is also a valuable ally to the U.S. in Afghanistan, and rising tensions could imperil that cooperation. A nuclear war nation. in Afghanistan that began after the U.S. was attacked on September 11th, 2001, goes on today. And in this new year, a stark reminder that U.S. troops stationed there are still very much in harm's way. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin reports from the Pentagon on America's longest war and where we go from here. As the Afghan war approaches its 17th year, the body of the latest service member killed years. in action returned home. Vice President... 17 years we've been in Afghanistan. 17 years. 17 years we've been in pa uh, Afghanistan. And now, yeah, loaded with poppy fields, and we've been stocking up, over the past 12 months, we've been stocking up troops in Afghanistan for something else, thousands of them, and it's not for Afghanistan, okay? It's not for Afghanistan. It's, Afghanistan's basically in control, you know, we control Afghanistan. 17 years of war in Afghanistan. The Russians, the British failed miserably there, the Russians failed miserably there, and what are we doing there? guarding poppies more so it's a jump off place for our bases 17 years of money tax paying money for what shit pack your shit pakistan afghanistan that's what i'd say america's longest war President Mike Pence was at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware to greet the remains of Sergeant First Class Mihail Golan, a 34-year-old Latvian immigrant from Fort Lee, New Jersey. Golan was killed on New Year's Day near the Pakistan border in an area not far from where the U.S. dropped the mother of all bombs last year. Eight years earlier, Sergeant Golan served on the same Pakistan border, shown here, manning a tube-launched, optically-tracked, wire-guided missile to track militants crossing the border from safe havens on the other side. Today, the State Department announced it was cutting more than $255 million in security aid to Pakistan, a punishment for its ongoing support for the Taliban. We consider them to be destabilizing the region and also targeting U.S. personnel. The United States will suspend that kind of security assistance to Pakistan. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis was asked whether he worried Pakistan would close the vital supply lines and border crossing used by the U.S. military into Afghanistan. I bet they will. There's no indication of anything like that. Since President Trump took office, the number of U.S. troops in Afghanistan has doubled to 16,000. Pay attention. The White House announced a new strategy. Pay attention. Pay attention. To the, from the man who said he wouldn't do this, the troops in Afghanistan have doubled to, what's the number? That crazy number 16. 16,000 American troops in Afghanistan. He's doubled that amount this year. To six, so it makes 16. Why do we need 16,000? Listen, you don't need 16,000 troops to guard poppy fields. I'm telling you, they're loading, and my sources say, they're loading up troops in Afghanistan to use in the Iran conflict that's coming. Okay? I'm telling you, they're loading them up there and just holding them there in Afghanistan for need in that Middle Eastern theater. 16,000 American troops. 16,000. Insanity. Insanity. Strategy for Afghanistan in August. We vowed to win this war on our terms, on this soil. The top U.S. commander said he now has more leeway to pursue the Taliban. We've used air power, dropped more munitions this year. Sixteen thousand uh, troops to get the Taliban. The Taliban now Come control on. half of Afghanistan. It's only to Pakistan. Now that the U.S. has vowed to cut it's security Pakistan. aid and other assistance to the country, China may be looking to cozy up to its Middle East ally, Pakistan. Historically, China. And Here Pakistan have maintained close ties. Fewer than two years after it was established, Pakistan first recognized the People's Republic of China. Pakistan's Prime Minister has hailed China as his country's best and most trusted friend. The two nations remain close strategic Pay trade attention. partners. Recent moves by China, though, suggest the country may be looking to exploit Washington's decision to slash Pakistani aid in order to gain geopolitical advantage over the U.S. in the region.
On Thursday, just days after the White House accused Islamabad of failing to combat terrorism and threatening to cut aid, the U.S. State Department has placed Pakistan on a special watch list for severe violations of religious freedom. Ten other nations were also redesignated as countries of particular concern under the International Religious Freedom Act for having tolerated or engaged in egregious violations of religious freedom. China, Eritrea, Iran, Myanmar, North Korea, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan all were designated on December 22nd. The department said in a statement, the protection of religious freedom is vital to peace, stability, and prosperity. These designations are aimed at improving the respect for religious freedom in these countries. Hundreds of Palestinians protested in the Gaza Strip on Thursday against electricity cuts and worsening economic conditions in the coastal enclave. The demonstrators rallying in the Jabalia refugee camp vented their anger against both the Palestinian Authority of Mahmoud Abbas and the Islamist movement Hamas, which runs Gaza. The electricity cuts are a result of a dispute between the Palestinian Authority and Hamas. The PA announced on Wednesday that it had agreed agreed to restore payments for electricity in Gaza six months after halting them. The Islamic State's branch in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula declared war on Hamas in a 22-minute execution video. The IS branch asked its supporters to attack Hamas, a Palestinian Islamic political party, also labeled as a terrorist group by the U.S. The video, released on January 3rd, opens with a clip of U.S. President Donald Trump announcing Jerusalem will be recognized as Israel's capital. The video cites Hamas's crackdown on Islamist militant groups and its failure to prevent the United States from recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel as reasons for declaring war. Later, a man is shot in the back of the head because he allegedly smuggled weapons to Hamas members. According to a translation released by the Syed Intelligence Group, the speaker calls on viewers to attack security headquarters and courthouses belonging to Hamas, calling them, quote, pillars of tyranny. The New York Police Department and the FBI are investigating images on social media of what appears to be ISIS supporters taking selfies outside museums and other locations around New York as a warning of a possible attack. The photo began circulating over the weekend. It shows a mask... Pay attention. This is how false flags begin. This is how CIA propaganda is spread. Okay? From out of the blue social media sites and then now if they caught this now okay which they probably weren't supposed to or they put it out here for a reason they're letting you know what's coming okay they're letting you know I'm telling you this is what they do so they'll back up it it could be five months from now it could be six months and they'll say do you remember those photos blah 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 circulating we found this this is how it begins man with an ISIS logo on his scarf. He's standing in front of a snow-covered sidewalk outside the Upper East Side Metropolitan Museum. The caption underneath it reads, We are in your backyard, O worshippers of the cross. It's being used to recruit, radicalize, and inspire lone wolves in New York. Eric Feinberg is co-founder of GuyPec, a cyber intelligence firm that keeps track of online terrorism-related hashtags. Feinberg said the photos and others like them are meant to sow fear and to embolden potential lone wolf terrorists into taking action. Feinberg believes social media sites need to do a better job at filtering out this terrorist propaganda. They need to do a better job and they've got to stop with the rhetoric. They keep saying we're hiring thousands and thousands of people to do this, but yet we're finding this stuff, these, these posts and tweets, within minutes and seconds of posting. A second image shared a few days later shows a telephone with an them. ISIS logo on the screen being held up in front of... They want them to find them. That's the idea. This is to spread fear, that, and set up what's coming, obviously, if another false flag. Right. ISIS has its own Facebook platform, everything else, you know, but we're not allowed to spread the truth, you know. <laughs> we're not allowed to spread the truth bottom line you know this is how it goes the one world trade center the building that replaced the twin towers which were destroyed during the terrorist attacks of september 11 2001 the new york police department told cbn news quote the nypd is aware of the photograph as with all terror related threats the nypd is looking into the incident at this time there are no credible threats related to new york city 
Last month, the pro-ISIS online propaganda poster displayed a fake picture showing a captive NYPD commissioner, James O'Neill, kneeling before a mass terrorist, and other images of ISIS supporters in Times Square. <laughs> The group repeatedly threatened to attack the U.S. during Christmas and the New Year, but no major terrorist strikes took place. In late October, however, one ISIS sympathizer killed eight people by running them over with a truck in Manhattan. And in mid-December, another ISIS sympathizer unsuccessfully attempted to set up a pipe bomb in New York City. Terrorist experts say with ISIS continuing to lose ground... Just so everybody knows, the October 1st attack here in Las Vegas was the beginning of the harvest moon okay the harvest season the harvest moon and october 31st when this attack truck attack was the ending of the harvest season okay just so you know one in the first one on the day that ended same things false flags beginning of the harvest end of harvest so exact dates the first and then 31st in both Syria and Iraq, the only motivation that the group has right now is to call on lone wolf attacks in order to prove that it's still influential. French nationals who fled to fight with Islamic State in Syria could be facing trial in Kurdish-held territory, not back in France. If in Syrian Kurdistan there are judicial institutions that are capable of assuring a fair trial with guaranteed rights of defense, they will be judged there. Debates over what action should be taken against jihadists holding French passports has been gathering pace. That's since the arrest of a notorious female recruiter in Syria last month. She was blacklisted by both the UN and the US and is said to have recruited more than 200 French citizens. According to a US-based research group, more than 1,500 extremists of French origin joined ISIL's ranks over a three-year period, and around 300 of them have since returned to France. This is what you get when you let them in. The I don't feel safe personally living in this area. I fully believe 100% within five to eight years, the latest, France, Germany is going to be overrun by Muslim population and the Muslims themselves. A lot of Europe will be. Listen to what I'm telling you. Five, ten years. All, like, overrun by Muslims. Overrun by Muslims. And I'm nothing not to try to say, listen, it's just... All over the world, they're inundating by putting these refugees and you know, sending them all over the place. And that's their plan. They stimulate the economy. Okay, Most people think it's, it's they stimulate these economies. It's their way they stimulate economies. <laughs> and they give them everything. You know, you come in, you get your, your license, you get your social security card, you get money, you get housing, you get training, you get all this stuff. We don't even have free schooling for our kids, college, but these people get free college, free training, everything. Amazing. For like three years now, and I think the council or the government should do something about it, and everyone should take responsibility, and they should be punished very harsh. It is dangerous now to be out and about at night. Uh, the public are in fear. And uh, the police can only do what they can do. There should be more resources out there, but unfortunately, the governments are probably not given the budget. This is where it's all going wrong. A rise in violent crime in Germany's Lower Saxony region See? is being linked to an increase in migrants in a government backed study. We have reports of violent crime in one German state increased by more than 10% in the last two years. See? Well, this is exactly what there a group of criminologists at Zurich University of Applied Science set out to find. And what they established is that there is a link. What did I just say? I didn't even watch this news. Increase due to. <laughs> 
violent Mig crimes in Lower Saxony and the influx of migrants. But the authors say there are a number of important contributing factors. The first and foremost is the age of the migrants. Most are men between the ages of 14 and men. 30. Now, generally speaking, people in this age bracket are more likely to commit acts of a violent nature than people in other age groups. Secondly, where they come from is important. Migrants who come from Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan tend not to carry out the same number of violent acts as migrants, for example, that are coming from North Africa. And then third, what is also relevant is the fact that there is a lack of women among the migrants. Only a quarter of migrants are Dude, wait, Dude, listen to the statistics. If you remember me discussing a while back how a lot of these migrants that are coming into these countries from France, Germany, Canada, even the United States, all over, are mostly men, okay? Mostly men, not females and not children. Where are all the females and children? These husbands come, you know, brothers come, all this stuff that they round up and they get them and they transfer them over here all over the place. Where's the all the women and children? Where's all the women and children? Female, which means that you have groups of young men without their wives, their mothers, or their sisters, and they are more likely to carry out acts of a violent nature. West Wing staffers will say goodbye to their personal cell phones while they're at work. Starting next week, White House employees and guests can't use their personal devices in the West Wing. Instead, all business must be done on their government-issued ones. Rumors of a personal cell phone ban started circulating months ago. In a statement Thursday, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders cited security and integrity concerns. Multiple government officials told Politico last year they thought White House Chief of Staff John Kelly's personal cell phone might have been compromised for months. Kelly is reported lead the one enforcing the ban. Government devices are more secure, and one official told Bloomberg there are just too many devices on the White House network. Aides have expressed concerns about contacting their families or others during the workday as government devices have limited communication. It's been confirmed that two Russian servicemen were killed in an attack on an air base in Syria on Sunday. A Russian-operated Hamimim facility on Syria's Mediterranean coast came under mortar shelling at night, but the Defence Ministry says the air base is still operational. It adds that the surrounding territory has now been secured and that the security, Syrian security forces are looking for those involved in the attack. Russia is denying reports that seven of its warplanes were destroyed in a rebel attack in Syria. Russia's Kommersant Daily reported earlier that the planes had been destroyed in an attack on Khamenei Air Base over the weekend. What makes no sense with this story is Russia's got this top base there, surrounded by the S-400 and S-500 they just put in service over there, and all these top radars. How are they getting attacked by rockets? How is this Russian base being attacked by rockets? It just doesn't make any sense. And now they're saying that they lost a bunch of fighter planes? I mean, this doesn't logically. You have all this defense, top Russian hardware, okay? And you're getting rocket fire and you know into a base? That makes no sense. It makes no sense. And they have one of the best air defense systems uh, in the world. Could be the best. The S-500 coming out could be the best. Makes no sense to me. Just put that out there. Just makes no sense. The Commerçant report on alleged destruction of seven Russian warplanes is fake, Russia's defense ministry reported, adding that the Russian air group in Syria was combat ready. Get read, pay attention. I'm, I'm quickly, wait. We're going to go back on this. You ready? Please pay attention right here. Forget about the migrants for one second. This is very important. President tells military to be ready. Orders the army. Pay attention. China on the move.
strength in military training and war preparedness. Incredible army. China is preparing for major, major war. Of South Korea and the United States have agreed to delay the annual South Korea US joint military exercises in light of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics that start next month. Our Blue House correspondent, Hwang Ho Jun, reports. The agreement came during a phone conversation between President Moon Jae in and his American counterpart Donald Trump late Thursday night Korea time. According to a Blue House press release, the two leaders agreed to postpone the exercises to de-escalate tension on the Korean Peninsula and to let the combined forces focus on ensuring the security of the games. The idea was initially proposed by President Moon, which was revealed during an interview with U.S. broadcaster NBC News last month. The 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics will be held from February 9th to the 25th, and the Paralympics will be held from March 9th to the 18th, which would have overlapped with the biggest of the joint exercises that are held each spring, known as Key Resolve and Fall Eagle, which involve more than 300,000 U.S. and South Korean soldiers. President Trump promised he will send a high-level delegation, including members of his own family, to the Pyeongchang Olympics and stressed that the U.S. will fully support President Moon in the process of resuming dialogue with North Korea. Residents in the San Francisco Bay Area were shaken awake in the early hours of Thursday Pay morning attention. after a magnitude 4.4 earthquake hit the region. The quake's epicenter was on the eastern edge of Berkeley really at a change. depth of 8 miles, according to the United States Geological Survey hitting just after 2.30 a.m. local time. There were no immediate reports of damage or injuries, but enough people tweeted they felt the tremor to make hashtag earthquake the top trending topic worldwide. Attention. It was initially reported by the USGS as a magnitude 4.7 event before being quickly downgraded. Quickly downgraded. California's wildfires may be over for now, but the after effects could still be dangerous for the state. California is expected to get up to four inches of rain next week. That may sound promising for an area so recently ravaged by wildfires, fueled in part by dry conditions. But rainstorms over land scorched clean of roots and vegetation make for the perfect recipe for mudslides. A U.S. Forest Service spokesman told CNBC, we have a lot of steep fire denuded hill slopes where a lot of heavy rain at once could cause flooding and debris flows. In similar fashion, Santa Barbara County Public Works said Thursday, to think that there won't be flooding would be very foolish. The Thomas Fire, the biggest recorded fire in California history, began December 4th and is still burning at 92% containment as of Thursday. The recency of the fire left officials little time to repair. Now, crews are frantically rushing to clean out catch basins for upcoming rains. California is trying to recover from a historically destructive wildfire year. Several fires broke records in 2017, including the Tubbs Fire in Sonoma County, which destroyed the most structures. There's a new Silicon Valley-backed health craze popping up in some parts of the country. Listen drinking unfiltered, untreated, raw water. Some stores are bottling natural spring water and selling it for as much as $60 a pop. But is it safe? Proponents of the raw water movement claim typical drinking water has the same bacteria and minerals you'd find in nature, but also the chemicals and chlorine used to treat it. They also point out the risk of contaminants in municipal water, like lead from corrosive pipes. But experts say raw water could contain dangerous bacteria, viruses, and parasites that can make you seriously sick. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention argues even... So now, the new thing is drinking raw water and the people are paying $60 a bottle for raw water from a river, a stream, a puddle. Get the out of here. Raw drinking water full of bacteria, all kinds of shit. That's the latest craze. Let's drink raw water from puddles, rivers, creeks, lakes, and sell it for $60 a bottle and people buy it. These are the same people that complain about spending 50 cents on a fucking envelope or a stamp. <laughs>
but they'll spend $60 for a bottle of raw water unfiltered. It's the latest craze right here. Let's just grab water from there without testing it and let's sell it. What the, for real? Becoming millionaires selling raw water, like unfiltered, nasty water. Let's see how that's worked for the African people and other people in other countries, third world nations that have no real good water, drinking water to drink. They end up very sick and die with serious diseases and viruses. That's, that's a great blueprint to sell raw water. I'm surprised the Food and Drug Administration is allowing this company to sell unfiltered, dirty water. Even basic water treatment methods and filtration can help stave off dangerous contaminants and that the chemicals used to treat the water are safe for consumption. And even though treated municipal water can still become contaminated, as was the case in Flint, Michigan, it's probably better to be safe than sorry. The government should be completely Despite the wave of hurricanes, mass shootings, uh, and the shadow of a nuclear war, Bill Gates says the world is actually itself. getting better. Business Insider shares that in an editorial in Time, Gates notes many trends ranging from rates of child mortality to the number of countries now offering protections for gays and lesbians are heading in a positive direction and argues that we just don't hear much about them because of the focus on negative news. Gates writes, these events, as awful as they are, have happened in the context oh, of a bigger order, positive trend. Job. Among the developments he points to are a drastic decrease in child mortality rates for children under five, a dramatic decline in the proportion of the world population that lives in extreme poverty, and the laws that protect... What did he say? What did, he, what did they say he just said? A complete decrease in population and childbirths around the world. He's killing off the population and preventing any further population. This is my point. The man will tell you straight he cares about depopulating the planet right up there with the Rothschilds and the Red. He's right in there with them. Okay, This man is out there. Bill, pack your shit, you're finished. Okay, Maybe your windows will pop you into another window. Nut jobs. These wealthy, wealthy, rich New World Order globalists. He thinks he's God, this one. But gay people are now in place in 100 countries. The homeless population in Los Angeles County recently soared 23% over just the last year. 4,000 homeless just blocks from City Hall. Unfortunately, that is just a small percentage of the city's homeless population. According to the LA Times, Crazy. the startling jump has touched every significant group, including youth, families, veterans, and the chronically homeless. <laughs> In 2015, Elvis Summers, once homeless himself, started tackling the problem one nice tiny house at a time. It all started after he became friends with a woman named Irene McGee, better known as Smokey. It was really hard. You know, people talk crazy to you. Kids is mean to you. You know, talk about you with that old woman pushing a basket. She had been homeless for 10 years following the loss of her husband. One day I was just like, you know, like, Smokey, I, I know you said you lived down the street, but where, you know, exactly? And uh, so I, I made her walk me down there and show me, and it was um, one of the houses down the street. It's like a, a strip of dirt next to the house and a broken chair. And she was like, I, you know, I sleep over there. And I'm like, well, you know, where over there? <laughs> and it's right by that chair. And I'm just, you know... It just got to me. That moved Summers to build Smokey a place she could call home, a tiny home. I just asked her, I said, you know, how would you feel if I built you a little mini house? <laughs> and, uh, I love her response. Nice she people said, still in the world. Today. When is it going to be ready? <laughs> <laughs> went to Home Depot and bought 500 bucks worth of wood and threw it on the ground and went, <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's build a little teeny house. It took five days to build a three and a half by eight foot house. 
video of his helpful construction went viral. Since then, Summers has raised more than $100,000 to build more of these houses for people in his community. Each of these homes has an actual address listed on them, giving those who live here a sense of ownership and security. That's what people want, you know, a place to just a place to rest their head. So, you know, I, I put in a, you know, an address on there to, you know, mentally help that lift. CBN News was there when Summers presented this homeless man with a place to call his own. This house right here is yours. Why don't you come and uh, take a look? I even got some, uh, you know, put some. You know what's going to happen with this? Wonderful man, great idea. But where are you going to put these tiny houses when they don't own any property? They don't have any place to put them. You can't leave them on the street. They'll say, watch, it's going to come. You won't be able to leave them on the street or in alleys. And it's a great idea. But hopefully Los Angeles will get some abandoned property or something that they have and they can put them on there. Uh, you know, they need to put them somewhere, but that's going to be the downfall of them building these tiny houses for the homeless. Where are you going to keep them? Where are you going to put them? It's a great idea, but the, the state or the city would have to, to, I guarantee you, the government will go after, you know, the states will go, the city will go after them. Where are you going to put them? Where are you going to keep these things? Uh, Terry just now said that they've been outlawed in Portland. I mean, that's one of my point. It's a great idea, though. My point is, I like it that this man took it out of his heart to do this for these people. This is a true, you know, this is a patriot. This is someone helping another, other Americans and taking time out of his life to do it. And he certainly didn't do it to get on the news, but it's good that it made the news. Uh, Some Marine flags in it for you, since you're a Marine. And if someone opens the window... Sorry. <laughs> Some local governments around the country are also using this method to help their homeless. From Chicago to Portland, Oregon, where the idea has grown to tiny house villages. But now back in L.A., officials see the small houses as nuisances. See? Some saying they pose health and safety risks. These wooden shacks are not the real estate I'm looking for in my district, said Councilman Joe Bascano. That's what I said. Councilman Curran Price said, I'm getting complaints from constituents who have to walk in the streets to avoid them. Earlier this year, the city council moved to seize the homes without prior notice. Summers captured this video as three houses were confiscated. He managed to move eight of there them to Faith Community Church, but the people who lived in them were once again on the street. And it was like, it was like watching Linus and the Peanuts, you know, like drag the blanket away. We were, uh, it was heartbreaking. It, it was a, one of the worst days. Tim Chambers, pastors Faith Community. It hurts my heart how the city has been taking the homes from the homeless and wanting to destroy them if they didn't have somewhere else to put them. Elvis is, and I am too, trying to see if we can get some property somewhere to be able to set these homes up and set up a homeless encampment to be able to allow them to have a place. After months of backlash and media attention, the city is developing a process to work with nonprofit groups, including Summers, to help those living on the streets. Meanwhile, Smokey recently passed away. She was a wonderful human being. She was my friend. Her memory, says Summers, motivates him to help others. I can't just go and change the whole world, but I can do my best to change the world around me. And that's what I'm trying to do. And Bravo. I hope that, you know, Bravo, in the process it inspires other people, Bravo. you know, to just take a second, you know, and be better. Charlene Aaron, CBN News, Compton, California. Now I want to go into a special about Fukushima. Uh, we were talking about Fukushima for some time now uh, in our private group here. And uh, this is new and it just came out and it really tells you what's really happening to the Pacific Ocean because of Fukushima and how serious this really is. And it's being ignored. Totally being ignored. Dreamer, 
time to get Fukushima back into the news. You know, as we know, it's it's like a curse that keeps on giving day after day and well, year after decade. We're breaking right now radiation levels inside a Fukushima nuclear power plant damaged by that tsunami nearly six years ago is now at their highest point since that disaster. And experts believe melted fuel is leaking inside the plant almost daily, causing radiation levels high enough to kill a human being with just brief exposure. The latest readings now posing a serious challenge as officials prepare to dismantle the facility. Adam Housing, you covered that triple meltdown in Fukushima back in 2011, is following the story and he joins us live with more. Adam? Yeah, Jenna, hard to believe it's been nearly six years. And when we initially covered that, it was that great video that came in that really showed the destruction that Japan had to endure from the earthquake and the tsunami. But no one knew at the time the growing threat, which today continues to only get worse. That was the tsunami that took out the cooling system at Fukushima that basically caused the meltdown of three reactors that continues to this day. In fact, we're told the most recent numbers due to those meltdowns that nearly uh, 300 tons of radioactive water is dumped into the Pacific Ocean each and every day. The radiation levels, in fact, inside are now the highest level since 2011. Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, which is in charge of this area, reports that the radi radiation level has reached 530 sieverts per hour. The, to give you an example, it used to be 73 per hour. For people who don't know this stuff, let's put it into very simple terms. Four sieverts can kill a handful of people. Right now, 530 per hour are being detected there. 530 to per hour. radiation levels. A robot was sent in. It only lasted an hour before radiation took it out, basically ruined it. It found a six-foot gaping hole inside that somehow has to be patched. Now, due to this high level of radiation, the company assures the public everything will be fine, but we've sure. heard this information from Japan before. There's been criticism even back six years ago when this first happened that Japan wasn't giving all the information out. Uh, we do know this. They say it will take at least $300 billion and four decades to finally fix this. Four decades and $300 billion to fix a one nuclear reactor's meltdown. And the destruction to the planet and the ocean during those decades is, well, what's the reversal time on that? But they know something else is bigger coming to this planet, and that's obvious why they haven't cared. Okay, And Japan, I'm telling you, will be done with very, it could be five, less than five years. Between earthquakes, water rise, damage, you'll see complete destruction, tsunami. This area is the worst since the 1986 Chernobyl disaster. Uh, again, also, we, as we get more numbers coming in, Jenna, uh, to keep this in mind as well, they say that right now there's still radiation being detected off the coast of California and Oregon. Now, it's very small, but the worry is with 300 tons of radioactive water going in every day to the Pacific, what is that doing? 300 to tons of radioactive well, water. This is a, it's a crazy story, a day. Adam. And I remember all your reporting. It was You did such a great job there. You posted all the photos that you took and the time that you spent in Japan. Right. From your experience there on the ground and the precautions that you had to take simply as a journalist, I mean, what do you, what do you think about this? Well, it, you know, we were only got within 90 miles because we had protective gear, but, you know, we didn't know what we were dealing with, and that was one of the biggest complaints. Even the U.S. military was complaining to the Japanese government at the time. They weren't getting the true numbers, and what some people are saying is, has it been this bad from the beginning? And how are you going to fix this six-foot hole? I mean, a robot only lasted an hour or so because the radiation level is so high. Uh, and we really don't all know, all know also what this radioactive water is doing in the Pacific, Jenna. I think a lot of people are very concerned about that. They continue to monitor, monitor the fish off of Japan. There's still areas not allowed to fish in, but that water, as we know, moves towards the west coast sure. of the U.S. I haven't thought about it for several years, and now certainly we are. We're going to have yeah. to follow up on this. Adam, thank you. This water feels kind of funny. Yeah, and it smells bad. <laughs> Dad, look! Holy crap! <laughs> yes, Tokyo is contaminated, but my pity goes out to the 35 million people who live in it day to day and the visiting athletes. Looking out into the vastness of the universe, the greatest mystery is right here. Right under our feet. <laughs> the ultimate aim of all science Whoa. to penetrate the unknown. These are the stories <laughs> that we love to see. The Tell me, T.F. Gary. Tell me, T.F. Gary.
What the fuck does WTF mean? What the fuck? Oh. So let's go back to the week that the accident began. A bizarre and potentially troubling sight at Japan's damaged nuclear power plant. Sending out a burst of heat, radiation, and a blue flash of light. The, uh, when the cores melted down, the nuclear containments were really not designed for the temperature and the high radiation that they experienced. So what happened was all of the rubber seals that allow electric wires to go in and out and that um, allow the pipes to go in and out, all of those rubber seals failed. So even though the nuclear reactor core didn't melt through the concrete, what happened is that the groundwater is coming in through the holes in the walls. So for the last three years, there's been, as you said, 300 tons of water passing through that nuclear reactor and out into the Pacific every day. So the problem was in effect back a month after the nuclear accident occurred. And there were things they could have done back then. I, I recommended uh, pumping down the groundwater, but between the pumps and the nuclear reactor having something called a zeolite trench. Zeolite is a really good material, it's volcanic, that uh, would capture all of the radioactive cesium and most of the other isotopes. Well, I was told three years ago that Tokyo Electric didn't have the money. Well, it's one of those pay me now or pay me later. Because they didn't keep that groundwater under control three years ago, now they're paying the price. So these typhoons come along and dump, uh, as you said, 10 inches of rain, an enormous amount of rain in a very short time. And in addition to the 300 tons that's normally leaking in, now there's a lot Look more. Look at that. So the, all destroying, of the trenches the, that destroying the Pacific. connect different parts of the plant are now overflowing and leaking into the ground as well. You know, when you compare Fukushima to uh, Chernobyl, the total release of radioactivity from Fukushima is worse than the total release from Chernobyl. Chernobyl may have released you know, 20 or 30 percent more into the air but this ongoing leak of radioactivity into the groundwater never happened at Chernobyl. Rice farmer no, Hoshiyuki Nishiyama has all the latest gear to get the job done. This planter will sow six rows at a time. But these days, his farm machines are in mothballs and his rice fields lie fallow. In the village of Kawauchi, about 13 miles from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, the village is not officially in the mandatory evacuation zone, but it is contaminated with cesium fallout, and the farmers were told cesium. not to plant their rice fields. So the place is all but abandoned. So we've got the, the plant is continuing to bleed directly into the Pacific day in, day out, and whenever you get an excessive rainfall, essentially it pops an artery and, and and flows even more hundreds of tons into the Pacific. Look at that. And, and it's not a problem that's going to go Look away. Look at that. After Chernobyl, a year after Chernobyl, they had pictures of the nuclear reactor core. And a year and a half after TMI, Three Mile Island, they had pictures of the reactor core. Well, Fukushima is so radioactive, no one's gotten near it yet. We don't even know where this nuclear reactor core Horrible. is let alone try to stop it from leaking into the groundwater. Uh, it's a real mess. It could have been mitigated three years ago, but, uh, you know, they're saying the horse is out of the barn now and you're not going to get it back. Tokyo Electric was penny-wise and pound-foolish. There were chances to stop this in the first month, and they just didn't do it. And we know, Arnie, that TEPCO has been pumping hundreds of tons of highly radioactive water to storage tanks on the site, and that's pumped from the area around the reactor cores, even though we don't know where they are, or from the area generally. Now, the Japanese have repeatedly warned they're running out of storage. Did they dump some of that water? They dumped the, the water in the Pacific. 
Well, they are running out of storage if you limit their storage space to the site. But right over the fence boundary is totally uninhabitable land too. So if they really wanted to, they could extend these tank farms into land that's adjacent to the plant. Politically, they don't want to do that. They want to start dumping water as opposed to capturing water. They've already the started to did dump this water. They started the dumping the water. They got to prove it. Uh, it. There's two problems. First off, if there's another uh, severe earthquake. And there will be. Uh, a Richter 7. Not the Richter 9 that was off the coast, but a Richter 7. All of these tanks are not seismically qualified. And they'll all fail and run down into the... Okay, pay attention. He just said, and it makes complete sense, they don't need another 9.0 earthquake, a 7, 6, 7 will do the job to possibly rip out these other reactors and cause them to fail as well. Okay? This is what I'm saying. And here's the crazy thing. And I was talking to one of my investigators. I said, you know what? I want to know why all U.S. nuclear power plants pretty much are built on fault lines. Why would you put nuclear power plants on fault lines in the United States? And I'm going to get that answer for everybody. I'm going to get that answer on the why they have done this. Sounds to me like a great plan to cause nuclear havoc with major earthquakes. And Japan gets hit on a regular basis with five point plus, four point plus earthquakes. They just need the six, seven, right location, and then wham, it's even worse. But I'm going to get to the bottom, it's bothering me. I want to know why nuclear power plants were put on fault lines. It makes no sense logically, physically, scientifically, environmentally. Just, it's the dumbest thing that I've ever heard of, unless it was pre-planned for fallout when major earthquakes start at a certain time period during this planetary swap over, and this is my point. Pacific in mass, which would be uh, an insult to the Pacific that has, has never occurred in the history of the Look world. At that. So the, the first issue is they've got all these non-seismically qualified tanks that they're throwing up still at uh, two a week. And those tanks then... So now let's ask yourself this question. Why would you have non-seismic tanks built for this Fukushima plant. Knowing Japan is an extremely high earthquake area, why would you build a nuclear plant with tanks that are not built with X, probably to save lots of money, okay, to be seismic safe? All over the world in earthquake areas, I learned earthquake construction in Central America. They're known for earthquakes, volcanic activity. Every building is built, especially something like that, with seismic proof, foundations, container, you know, buildings, everything. Big buildings put on springs, just like in Japan's normal commercial construction. And Japan is experts in earthquake construction, but yet they build a nuclear power plant without earthquake strength containers to contain the fuel rods. That, that, like, okay, come on, like, makes no sense but they put up big buildings in in japan and tokyo all the time and they're all earthquake proof but you don't put an earthquake proof or at least you know build it to the to the code to where for to sustain earthquake up to say 9.0 i mean come on makes no sense just none of it makes any sense it's ridiculous run the risk of a failure in a seismic event the second thing, though, what, what TEPCO is doing is they're attempting to clean the water in the tank with filters. And they've been reasonably successful. You know, when they can do a tank, and, and there's so many tanks, there's so many they haven't gotten to, they can remove about 90% of the radiation from the tank. 
the radiation levels are still so high that if that tank were in any other country of the world, we certainly wouldn't think about releasing it into the Pacific. But considering how bad Fukushima is, the, the Japanese seem to consider that as, uh, you know, 90% is good enough. But the other half of that is that all of that radioactive material now is in filters sitting yep. in, you know, like a, like a Brita filter when you, uh, when you take a Brita filter out of your sink. You can walk over to your trash can and throw that Brita filter into the trash can. Well, the filters that TEPCO's using now contain all of that radiation that was in the water. And it's not just cesium. Cesium's bad enough. These filters are going to have to be stored for 300 years somewhere. But because the nuclear core is melted down, what we've got now is strontium, which... People have got to be nuts to eat seafood from the Pacific. Got to be, I mean... is a really bad chemical. It's a bone seeker that causes all sorts of uh, cancers. But also plutonium. The nuclear reactor has breached and we're getting plutonium in the groundwater, which is now winding up in these filters. Well, plutonium stays radioactive for a quarter of a million years. And the Japanese are not years. being honest with their population. They're not telling them that, oh, by the way, in addition to these nuclear cores, whenever we find them, we've got thousands of filters that now have essentially pieces of the nuclear core in them that we're also going to have to store for a quarter of a million years. So by filtering the water, they've reduced the liquid problem, but they've created a huge solid radioactive waste problem. Look at that. that no one in the... Uh, and the world is talking about where are they going to store all of these filters for a quarter of a million years. Most of that breach is in the form of liquid radiation leaking out. But, you know, there's holes in the side of this thing that are continuously releasing gaseous radioactivity. So when they put that tent over top, that white tent over top of the building, that building was called the reactor building. It was designed to catch all those gases. And I, I can't figure out why they're doing it. They're basically allowing the airborne radiation that gets out to uh, float freely throughout Fukushima Prefecture again. You know, it's nowhere near as bad as on the day of the accident, but if it were a, an operating plant in anywhere in the world, the releases from that building would be called excessive and the reactor would be shut down. Of course, at Fukushima, there's a different set of rules in place. Since the big accident, we've heard almost nothing about the impacts on people in that region. There are accounts coming out of there of strange tumors, Listen. kids dying, pets dying. What have you heard and can we ever expect an honest accounting from Japanese authorities? But that's a pretty good, pretty good summary, frankly. We continue to get uh, information from people who live there about cancer rates and illnesses in general, not just cancer. Now, we think of radiation as a, a cancer-causing thing, but it also causes uh, many other ailments. Uh, much higher incidences of a whole range of, of illnesses than they had in, you know, in 2010, the year before the accident. So we know that gardeners, uh, you know, and, and plants that are outside the exclusion zone are seeing the effects of chronic levels of radiation that the Japanese government would choose to ignore. We're also working with doctors in Japan, and some brave doctors are saying that they've been threatened, that their hospital rights have been uh, threatened. You know, if, if you tell your patient this illness is radiation related, you'll lose your right to practice and things like that. So there's an enormous pressure on the medical community to tell the patients that what they're experiencing is not at all related to radiation. But you know, the, the key is statistics, and uh, the question is when will the statistics 
be released for um, uh, you know mortality, morbidity. Sure, more general, statistics. General illnesses. How many people have died? The high death toll. We're not seeing the data. The medical community now has to file every report that it writes with the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, before it's issued. So if you're a hospital and you've got mortality data, you're not allowed to issue that to the public until those reports have been cleared by the IAEA. Well, Article 2 of the IAEA's charter is to promote nuclear power. So even if the hospital was uh, conscientious, and of course there's a lot of political pressure not to be, but even if it was conscientious, there's another, uh, another step in the process, and they've got to clear an IAEA hurdle before those numbers are released. It's truly frightening that the pressure that the medical community is undergoing in Japan, and very few of them are, are willing to tell the truth. Is there any chance that those who should have known about this or could have known about this will be exposed to justice? Uh, they did know about it. There's no doubt about the fact that Tokyo executives in Tokyo knew about the magnitude of the crisis and, uh, and stymied effective information being provided to the people. This is yes, all the nuclear waste. Contaminated, Look at the nuclear waste. My pity goes out to up. the 35 million people who live in it day to day and the visiting athletes. <laughs> Thank you. What the fuck files for another great show. Always puts together good shows, and when appropriate, I will share. Soon with our video production team that we're putting together, we will be producing these same type of videos, uh, like you'll see pre-shot, pre-done with me narrating, and things of that nature, like very similar to how Vegas is going to be. Uh, the shows one, two, and three. A lot of good stuff coming on that. Okay, I, if you did not see my video earlier, uh, I put a video up, uh, an update video from our offices. Uh, it is on our group wall. A lot of good stuff going on, a lot of hard work. I'm wondering, did I pin that show to the top? Maybe. Hmm. Maybe not. I'm looking for the show to show everybody who have not seen it. And then I want to show you something really quick about up north. Hmm. It's kind of weird. Okay. Here is the video from earlier. It is up in the group. If you haven't seen it, it's right here. It's from me live in our conference room going over certain things, and then this following week you'll see released a PowerPoint presentation. We are working very hard for everyone, and things are coming together, and our main goal in 2018 is not just Survival Group and Atlas Cities, but to bring in many, many more members, membership. So anyone having any questions, you can please contact me either via Facebook or at scott at mfaofficial.com. But the video is in there um, from six hours ago. I can tell how many viewers. That's why I'm bringing it up to show people. Uh, many people probably haven't seen it yet. Now, let's go to Boston. As I tried to tell everybody, you're going to see big records have been broken all over the place with this storm. Boston breaks the highest ever recorded tide, followed by frozen floods. Okay? 
like I said, this was not going to be some small storm. It just was a serious storm, and it's official. Um, Boston has broken the highest ever recorded tide since 1921. 1921. Uh, and that's just even during the blizzard of 78, it still wasn't. Look at that. Frozen seawater coming up. Frozen. Here. Look at that. And this is nothing. We just started the beginning of winter. Get ready. Here's another one. Oh, this happened all in a matter of 45 minutes. Uh, we watched the ocean water start to creep in from the bay first. Uh, then I came out, checked the back, and noticed that was flooding as well. Uh, my uh, wife ran down to go save the car. Uh, my, we have two cars in the back parking lot. They're both flooded uh, completely. Uh, unquestionably, the worst I've seen it down here since 2007, uh, at least on this section of the beach. Uh, we've been down the Gun Rock section. gets it pretty bad sometimes, but uh, this is unique for this area. Look at that. I told everybody, Boston, Maine, Vermont, those areas are going to get it worse. There's another one. Look at all that water. That's seawater. And then it froze. It's about five feet of seawater that came in, very far inland. Yeah, rare explosive cyc cyclogenesis of East Coast cyclone. Return interval 25 to 30 years. Amazing. Amazing. Boston breaks the highest ever recorded tide followed by frozen floods. Toronto. If I go up on the top here, sorry. Right here. Toronto breaks 59-year-old low temperature record Canada. FEMA has no money for the United States. <laughs> They're broke. And, you know, this is just the beginning. 2018 just started and we're already with winter breaking storms, major shit going on around the planet, as we all know. All right, I will take um, some questions and then this is a wrap. This show will be uploaded live. I have to download it first and upload it live. Um, I have to put the intro on it. I should have just put the intro in here, but I'm traveling, so... So I know some people had some questions. I'm going to say this again for people talking about this Clinton fire. 
There was no servers burned, none of the above. It was just a simple fire. It's not a problem. This is fake news about them destroying evidence and doing all this stuff, okay? Just so everybody knows. They started to round up MS-13 gangs today and opening up lots of these indictments that people have been talking about across the country. A lot of these big indictments across the country have nothing to do with the Democrats or Republicans. They have to do with MS-13, Crips, Bloods, drug gangs, drug dealers, mafia, etc. across the U.S. There's a major, major cleanup going on by Sessions and the Trump White House. That is what those indictments have to do with. Proof of that has even come out that they just started to re-look at the Clinton investigation. And I want you to know that's political. And you'll see. Regardless of anything, both sides are going down like I told you. And it's a very bad situation. And uh, yes, uh, Australia, massive heat waves are going on, as Liz says. Uh, Melbourne today was 45 degrees. That's there. And 35 degrees in Hobart with hot, hot winds. Okay, I'm being asked, what about the stock market? Okay, what you're seeing now is the stock market's going through like a pumping stage and it keeps going up and up and up and up. Okay, it's a very volatile market. I know people don't want to believe that. I know it looks great. Everybody's 401ks are doing good. Their pensions are doing good. Their IRAs are doing good. You know, their investments are doing good. Real estate's doing good. Wonderful. Um, but as I keep showing you, other countries around the world are dumping the dollar. And as that continues to happen, the dollar is going to implode. Our inflation, by the way, is going to continue to grow um, as well. And the stock market, you have to be very, very careful because what you're going to see trigger the fall of the stock market is going to be very serious indictments against Trump's inner circle and family. When that happens, when you see Kushner indicted, you see Jr. indicted, you see any of these top people or anybody from the White House, Get ready because the stock market are going to panic, okay? If it gets, they get wind and people get wind well, very fast at those levels of some serious shit going down, it's going to go, okay? War declared will also at first drop the market and then raise it back up again. But you're going to see the most volatility in this market having to do with any major indictments against Trump because all these companies, all these investors, all these things are banking on Donald Trump, okay, when it comes to these corporate taxes, as he's done, and to continue to keep pushing this agenda. If there is no Trump and he goes down or has to be, you know, removed or, 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 or it doesn't matter. You're going to see serious stuff. If we see a nuclear war or we see a major war go on, you're going to see the stock market. It's very volatile, even though it looks great. It is a perfect time to invest. Don't get me wrong. We are at MFA. We just started our own uh, corporate trading account for officers and board members to pool money in and to do investments so we can buy more stock and more key things, metals and things of that nature, to make more money and use it as, not for income for the LLC and to show it, you know, as a uh, solid uh, with investment along with the properties we're going to be buying. So all of that and our cash in the bank accounts. Um, uh, no, Deborah, I wouldn't pull out of a 401k at this moment. I promise you all, if I know something and when I hear from the people I know on Wall Street or something bigger, I would be, uh, you know me, I will go live. You're going to start seeing, beginning Monday, and maybe even through the weekend, I'm going to be starting. You're going to start seeing me come up doing breaking news wherever I am, things of that nature, discussing things for a few minutes, and then I'm going to be off. But I'm going to continually update you. I might even do some fun stuff. But you're going to be seeing me on a regular basis like I used to do and update people uh, what's going on, serious stuff, what's coming, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, uh, Liz is saying she's worried about superannuation uh, in Australia. I can't get it out because I'm working. Give up my job. No, I would not give up your job. Uh, Australia is in a whole different ball game. Uh, but when I say a whole different ball game, you're beyond lost. Australia is further gone in a socialist Marxist society, controlling society than the U.S. is at this moment. You've had your guns taken. You've had many, many things go on in your country. 
Um, yes, Jen, it'll go up during war, but at first it will drop. Okay, depending upon what kind of war it is. If it's a nuclear war, no, that's not. It's going to drop to the bottom. Uh, it will drop to the bottom if we start. If we pull off a nuclear war or something of like that, or a major chemical attack, uh, something of that nature. Uh, no, Billy, I have not seen anything on the Florida rocket launch. I'm going to clear something up. Someone keeps messaging me about chemtrails, okay? And she's actually getting under my skin. Because on New Year's Eve, Scott and the doctor came on, and I want to clear this up right now, came on and talked about chemtrails, as I say that chemtrails are being used to block radiation. The doctor stated that the, the components in there, she did not believe it was for blocking radiation. I disagree with the doctor, okay? I'm not a physicist, but I'm not stupid. Uh, and the main two ingredients, barium and aluminum, in, radi in, in chemtrails, aluminum reflects radiation and the heat, and barium absorbs radiation. You can Google me, fact check me, and do whatever. And this is what I'm saying. It, 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 the main two ingredients in chemtrailing are these two, and it is to block radiation. And I will stick to that, and that's what I believe. And know from facts, and if you do your homework on what this is, uh, with chemtrails. It's also poisoning us. That doesn't matter. Aluminum poisons us. Barium poisons us. Lithium, uh, you know, affects us. Everything in the air affects us. But chemtrailing, people keep thinking it's about blocking seeing something, and it's not. It has. They're not blocking you from seeing something. All these chemtrails are blocking our clear, acute view of space on a regular basis, of the sun, of the sky. Notice you have to go to places that are in the forest off reach places that are not getting chemtrails so that you can see even a blue, blue, blue sky, okay, a lot of times. Um, and there's lots of side effects and things of that nature. But I'm being bombarded about something from somebody uh, about this, this thing. You need to say that that's not what it's about. Uh, no, this is that this is what I see and I believe, and I'm allowed to disagree with the doctor. Okay? And I do disagree, and many experts agree with what I am saying about what barium and aluminum are doing in our atmosphere. Okay, and uh, what they're using it for. Less trails in Africa, as I have said. That's because in Africa, um, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. They don't care if all those people die. They don't care. They want them to die. That's why it's becoming a... I'm going to tell you something. Five years. Africa will be major, major military continent. Chinese already there, big base. U.S. coming in, building bases. Russia, you're going to see. I'm telling you. China, Africa is going to be, you know, fight to the death. You're going to, for the oil, the diamonds, the gold, everything, and it has been, but now it's going to be much worse. Again, this person keeps bothering me, and it kills the ozone layer. Okay, let me explain something to you. I will do a show on how ozone layers work, and magnetic fields work, and what both do. Okay, and what both block, and what don't block from this planet. And you'll understand. Believe me. And now I'm going to just simply atmosphere ionized atmosphere. That is correct. Just so. Okay. So, any other questions? Oh, I am ignoring the person, David. Just she. She keeps popping up in my corner window. She keeps popping up in a corner window looking to have a fight about something stupid. So, <laughs> you have to be very careful, uh, Tammy, in that, and I'm going to say this, videos going on YouTube and all. Be very careful of what videos you're listening to on YouTube because they put a lot of information together and tell you it's one thing and it, it get, it's something else. You make sure that you watch something that's, you know, of it shows that are of substance and fact check what's in 
those YouTube videos. Uh, yes, Brian, that is correct. Um, China has already established big business in Africa and big military in Africa. China is the new superpower. I didn't want to tell you, I mean, you need to hear this. It's the truth. Okay, and China will surpass the United States and everyone else in the world and be the superpower for some time. Promise. I'm, I don't want it to be true, but it is true. And again, you must understand our banking system and how what China has and what China is doing and what they own across the globe. China just doesn't buy bars of gold. China buys up the mines that get the gold or the land that has the gold. China binds up the land and the mines that have the silver, okay? The plutonium, the you name it. I could go down the line. Every minimal, min, you know, excuse me, a mineral. China buys those, okay? And they are organized, determined people. They are not, and they're very, here's the key word. Chinese people are disciplined. Disciplined, okay? They're disciplined. They are disciplined. And that's why they do much better in schools than us, all the above, okay? They own Australia. They own America. They've done it subtly over the past 50 years, and we allowed it to happen. Bottom line, okay? We created the dragon, the monster. And look, don't get me wrong. China's one of the oldest, you know, uh, people on the planet, along with Russians, you know, <laughs> America is a young country. People seem to forget that. America is a very young country as opposed to these other countries. Very young country. Okay. All right, guys. And again, some big bombshells have dropped and it's going to get worse. And I'm getting... I fully feel this. there's going to be a major, major distraction, like any time. It could be any moment. It could be in a few days. It could be within, I believe it's not going to be no more than seven to ten days, but major, major shit is coming, okay? Guys arguing about Hillary Clinton selling out this country. Okay, she sold uranium. There's much more to that story than what's being told to all of you and what's being shown to you. You have to do your homework on Uranium One to understand. Okay, it's a dirty deal. The Russians, how it got involved, the Clinton Foundation, the land and things like that. But listen, okay, one more time. Putting Hillary Clinton in jail is justice, sure, okay, Clinton. That's not helping America, I'm sorry to tell you. None of that shit is helping America. Putting Trump in jail and going after him is not helping America either. All the corrupt assholes need to get boxed up, buried, okay, and... If the people, after what's coming and happening now to this country, to this country, okay, if people do not get their shit together after this and seeing and learning of the truth and how dirty both parties are, okay, you need to be part of the Freedom Party, okay, meaning that's people, Americans, free, the Freedom Party, okay. Americans need to look out for Americans and help Americans. Towns, Cities across the United States are joining together, not waiting on our government and helping themselves. People must learn to help themselves. Yes, Trump is going to Camp David this weekend. A lot of Congress is going to be there. Camp David, I, I'm going to make a note here. I, I want to do a show about Camp David so people can understand what Camp David is. Camp David is the Pentagon moved underneath Camp David. From there, this all goes from Camp David. It begins the tunnel system. From there, for the president to go all the way to call uh, to De Denver, all the way down to the Ozarks and other places with high-speed train. Okay, fact. Boom, 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 boom. People don't understand what Camp David is. They think it's a bunch of cabins and things where they used to meet. No, no, no. Eisenhower made sure that that's not the case, and they've done a lot of work since then. Uh, yes, Shanna. Young and dumb is what our country is. Just look at a newly turned... I know, I deal with children. Uh, 
you know, this is, uh, I will do a show on Camp David and tie it into the, the we'll do a show on making Camp David, uh, the Denver airport, and the new Capitol building and that, and the big underground cities down in the Ozarks. It'll be one of our new style shows, pre-taped, put together for you, me narrating, and the whole bit. Uh, Jeff Sessions. If he fires Sessions, he's going to appoint another, he's going to create another bigger uprising. People need to understand, you're going to see, forget about collusion, you're going to see the real, what's, what's behind all of this, okay? Meaning the serious, serious crimes that have been committed. Forget the Russians, okay? All this shit's going to come out. All of this shit is going to come out. And Bannon, yes, my daughter's a sweet girl. She's a teenager. She's got her head on straight, but she's, you know, every kid has, you know, their own beliefs, and you let them go. You can only inform them. You can't force children, and I don't believe parents should force children to do anything. If their dream is to be an artist, let them be an artist. They need to work along the way to get there. They need to learn that respect to earn the money they need to build their business or their career or their dreams. But I would never stop my child from being something she wants to be. My job as a father is to be her father, love her, be there for her, and guide her with the best help I can give her from my own mistakes and my own successes. That's the best I can do, and that's what any parent should do. But don't force them into something. Many parents force kids into sports, music, doctors, lawyers, and they hate it because that's not what they want to be, and they only do it for their parents. Children should do what they want to do and what's in their heart to do. I don't know if it's this weekend, but I know it's soon. Um, uh, yes, Terry, they've been using nuclear drills under our miles and miles down. Nuclear drills will make hums. You'll see very light uh, earthquakes in areas you've never seen before a lot of times. Uh, but these are nuclear drills, and they drill six. To the last time they were checked, they do up to six to seven miles a day. Nuclear Air Force drills, drilling major tunnels. And then they come in. Put the pieces together like an erector set inside, almost like Legos, and then uh, concrete pieces. <laughs> run the power through, and they spray it with uh, with uh, concrete, and you're done. I'm very proud of my daughter. It's wonderful. Okay, I still have to be a father. Someday she'll thank me. I'm a little strict on things, but that's just the way I am. I love my daughter dearly, and I do not want her to make any of the mistakes that I have or, or uh, and as well, learn from the successes I have made. So all I can do is advise her. If she takes the advice, she takes the advice. If she doesn't, she doesn't. But I'm just, I love being a dad, and I love being a dad to my daughter. Um, she's a very big part of me. But I still remember to be a father and a parent, and that's very, very important. All right, guys. Good night. God bless. Thank you for watching my earlier video, and thank you for tonight. Everybody stay safe, stay warm if you're in those areas, um, because record cold has been breaking all over, uh, especially in the northeast, middle of the country, and even down into Florida, Panhandle, and things of that nature. Thank you guys for the great compliments on the show. I appreciate it, and if you didn't see the earlier video, do it. We were showing off a lot of the, the forums and things that are coming. And our team is, we're working through the weekend here, just so you know, to get all the membership plans done, survival group stuff, uh, things of that nature. So we are working through and investigating, setting up the shows for some upcoming good, great shows about Vegas. So good night, guys. And again, God bless and thank you all for your support. Thank you for those who donated. By the way, did you guys start to get my thank you cards? I mailed them before I left and I wanted to make sure you guys got them. So please let me know if you get your thank you card uh, from me. It was very important to me to hand write those to you guys, and I thank you again for your support and those who even dedicated monthly uh, money as well. I appreciate that. We all do here at MFA. This is costly, uh, these websites and what we're building and doing, um, but I can't thank you all enough. Okay, good. You got your card? Okay. Thanks, Dale. Bev, you got the thank you? Great. Thank you so much. Okay. Good night, guys. God bless you. You know I love you.